Aloha, everyone. Thank you for joining me on Think Tech Hawaii. I am Shonda Park, your host for Money Talks. Last month was recognized as Bereaved Parents Awareness Month, and I had the opportunity to interview Gabby Govail from Let Grace In and Joan Nagua of Hugs. Gabby mentioned her own personal struggles with financial stresses and financial worries after her son Grayson had a life-threatening diagnosis, which required her 24-7 care up until he passed away at only age five. And uh, Hugs actually mentioned financial hardships in their mission statement. So this is not a very popular subject. However, I truly feel that financial planning in terms of all members of a family really needs to be discussed. So today my guest is Rayanne Ishevez. She is, uh, she has been a financial educator for over 10 years. She is a wife, a mom of two sons. She is a respected leader in our community and she is a longtime friend and colleague. So over the years, I have learned so much from this woman and today I still continue to learn a lot from her. So I am very grateful that she is here today to talk about health related financial hardships, specifically with children. So Rayanne, uh, welcome back to the show today. Hi Shonda, you know, I um, just wanna thank you so much. It's always a privilege to be here with you and always great to see you. Always great to see you too. And again, you know, it was great having you on the show. Uh, I believe you were here in April. So again, thank you for being on. And this show, um, you know, I know it has touched you personally. And um, I want you to share your knowledge and experience um, and just start off with sharing your personal story in terms with a child in your own family. Yeah, so, you know, um... My at the tender age of three years old, my nephew um, was actually diagnosed with leukemia. So, you know, this topic that we're going to talk about today is very near and dear to my heart because at, you know, just three years old, um, experiencing leukemia in the family, it was tough, you know. So when you talk a lot about the emotional burdens that come uh, with, you know, battling this cancer, it's something that my family and I lived through. So my nephew is my older sister's son. And, you know, I still, till this day, he's 15 years old now. Um, but I still remember, you know, the countless emergency visits, even when his, um, even when his temperature would spike just a little bit, you know, um, we would rush him to the emergency room, right? The countless times that he was hospitalized, the medications, the surgeries, you know, all of the medical related things that we had to experience. So, you know, I understand firsthand the emotional um, you know, challenges that comes with that. But not only that, you know, it all leads to financial challenges as well, right? So uh, luckily my brother-in-law was in the military, so they had really good care. But um, at the time my sister was not working because um, she had to provide for my nephew. And, um, you know, and I know we're gonna talk a little bit more about that, but there's just so much that encompasses with, you know, find, um, not just the emotional hardships that we go through, but, you know, like what we're gonna talk about today, the financial hardships that really go into what the families deal with. Yes, and families do deal with medical bills, right? Like you mentioned, um, and luckily for your nephew with his dad being in the military, so he had coverage and unfortunately, you know, not all families have that. So even on the HUGS website, it states that medical bills can range from thousands to millions of dollars, which health insurance may not cover. So will you expand on that? Yeah, thousands of millions of dollars. That's a lot of money. So yeah. I think, you know, I want to talk about two things. I want to talk about the short term implications and really the long term implications, right, or impacts that the families go through. So I mentioned like with my nephew, right, um, medications, um, 
countless visits, whether it was to the emergency or the hospitals. And for um, for some kids, like, you know, they go through tri um, trial medications or treatments, right? So thousands to millions of dollars, that's a lot of money. So can you imagine, you know, for um, some families, they can be in this battle, not just fight this, this battle of what they're going through health-wise, but also financially. It could literally follow a family um, through their... In many, many years, because that's a lot of money. We're not just talking a few hundred dollars, right? Thousands to even millions of dollars. So can you imagine the financial stress that adds to the family due to just talking about the medical expenses alone? Now, let's talk about the loss of income. Like I mentioned, my sister was not working at the time. So a lot of families, you know, that's usually what happens, right? We, we have to cut down our hours at work or we have to quit altogether to care for our family. And especially, you know, today we're talking specifically about children. We wanna be there for our kids, right? So it's only natural that um, we are going to prioritize uh, caring for our children at this time. But when we think about financially, the impacts of that, now we're talking about, now we've lost that income. In addition to the uh, financial stresses with the medical bills, what about, you know, our day to day bills, right? We're still worried about that. We lost our income, but we still have to take care of our other financial responsibilities. And also what a lot of families don't think about um, is loss of opportunity. So if we're not working, that means that, you know, maybe at this time, this, this season of our life, we're not able to um save or we're not able to invest you know so when you think in, in terms of the domino effects right the um the financial impacts the loss of opportunity millions of dollars really essentially that can impact a family so that's huge and i think it's important to talk about you know um like you said shonda it's not necessarily a topic that's popular um but is necessary because it's not like something Families, I don't ever want any family to experience what we had gone through or some of the families um, in Let Grace In or Hugs, you know, and many other organizations out there and many other families that have experienced this. We never want this, um, any family to ever um, go through this. However, I think we need to talk about, you know, the financial impacts that it has on a family. Yes, I agree. And like you said, this is not something that people like to talk about. It's a very unpopular topic. However, it's very necessary to discuss and educate families. And although you know nobody wants to believe that anything will ever happen to their child, right? But as we've seen with Hugs, who has been in, in existence celebrating 40 years, how many families over all these years that they have helped through their program. However, what can families do, you know, with financial education to take a more proactive approach? You know, Shonda, that's a really great question. And in the previous shows that I was in, I talked about the Financial Foundation, and I want to talk about that again. And I think it's really important to, uh, when we're really thinking about financial planning, to take a holistic approach, right? So when you see the Financial Foundation, the first layer that we see is proper protection, right? So proper protection, ultimately, what it means is that we want to be able to protect our income, right? Any Anything uh, that may affect our ability to generate income, we want to make sure we can protect. Um, and let me, I will go back to proper protection in a minute, but the next step that we should take is also debt management, right? We want to make sure that we minimize our debt and liabilities, and then also start to build our emergency funds. So, you know, we talk about loss of income, right? When it, uh, with these families, imagine if they have, three months, six months, a year worth of income saved aside. This is one of the reasons why, you know, we want to have an emergency fund for maybe for situations as, as this, right, for medical. And I think a lot of times we think in terms of our own medical, like if something were to happen to us medically, um, 
However, it could be any member of the family, especially our children, right? And then, of course, um, investing for the long term. But let me go back to proper protection because, you know, we always say the financial foundation is, is like building a house, right? You want to build it from the ground up. And the proper protection is your first layer. So when we talk about, you know, protecting your ability to generate income and what we're talking about today, it can mean, again, if something were to happen to you or even your family members, right? So one example of proper protection is insurance. Um, you know, when we think about insurance in general, it's really just the transfer of risk, right? Or being able to replace something financially. And so one way that a family can start to plan is, you know, having insurance for themselves, but also considering having insurance for their children. Because children's insurance, you know, um, I think a lot of times this is also a controversial topic, right? Some people don't believe that it's necessary to have, you know, life insurance on their kids. But some of the reasons why you may want to have it in place is, for one, you know, we talked about um, med medical expenses, right? That's one. You know, there's many different types of life insurance. I think if I may backtrack a little bit, first of all, I think a lot of times when people think about life insurance and why they don't think their children needs life need life insurance is because, you know, we only think of it as, okay, it's a benefit that we, we would receive if, um, you know, we pass away, right? And yes, that's true. And when it comes to children, you know, maybe we can think that, think about it could cover some funeral expenses. You know, um, we, we haven't even talked about that, right? We talked about the um, medical treatments, we talked about loss of income, but there's also that component too, right? Of funeral expenses um, that can cost the family several thousand dollars. So that's one um, reason, I think most common reason of what people would relate to when they think about life insurance. But another way that we can think about this too is, you know, um, there is, you can actually accelerate the benefits of your life insurance, meaning that you don't have to pass away in order to use the benefits. And there's a rider that's usually available, that's available to all policies that you can actually, that will pay you if you have a terminal illness, right? It's called a terminal illness rider. So if your family is dealing with that, you can actually use your life insurance while you're still living to pay for things like medical expenses. Um, or you can even, and if it's related to your loss of income, that can also cover, right, um, the income, replace the income that you're not receiving while being able to take care of your family. Yeah, so talking about having pro proper protection for every single member of the family, how old do you actually have to be uh, in order to have something like this in place? That's you, actually, you know, um, it can be as early as 15 days old. Right. I know it's not like one of the first things we think about is when, you know, we have our children. Um, but I shared with you that, you know, my nephew, he was he was healthy. He didn't have any health problems when he was born. Um, and in fact, it was just that how we found out he had leukemia, he was playing with my other nephew, um, bumped his, you know, ran into something, um, his neck started to swell up and it never went down. And then we realized that he had cancer. So, you know, why you would want to insure your child as early as like 15 days old or a, a year old, right? Um, again, it's, it's, it's really all up to the family, but that is the soonest available that you can um, you know, have life insurance available for your children. Um, but again, because we never know, right? Um, it happened to him at three years old. And now, um, unfortunately, because he has a history of leukemia, he can no longer qualify for, for any type of insurance um, now at this time. So, you know, it's more, you know, planning ahead of time and really having peace of mind, right? And to have something available to you as a resource so that you can take away some of that financial burden that's added so that we can focus on the more important things like being able to spend time and, and really care for our family. Right, because you drove home a very important part is that now because your nephew didn't have anything in place when he was born, up until the diagnosis, he is no longer insurable. So 
even when he starts his own family, right, and wants to put financial planning in place uh, when he has his own kids and, you know, to protect his income in case anything happens to him, uh, he's no longer insurable. Yes. Yeah. And, you know, I think that that's one of the reasons why we want to start to think about this early on. And like you said, um, when in, in terms of finances, we should really be looking at our entire family. And, you know, there's so many different options um, as far as, you know, with the family, there's they you can get life insurance for the children or you can add them to your plan. So there's many different solutions available out there. It's just that, you know, I think, again, like you said, Shonda, it's a very sensitive topic and it's not something we want to think about. Um, but we want to have these conversations because we just never know. Right. And I think. Um, Again, it's better to have something just like we would want to we want to make sure that we have a plan in place in case something happens to us. I think we should have the same approach when it comes to our children. I agree. I really feel that every member of the family should be protected. And again, it's something it's a sensitive topic. A lot of people don't like to discuss it, but it's really important that we do, because mm -hmm. when a child is born, like you said, you never know. Right. Uh, parents are ecstatic, baby is born with 10 fingers, 10 toes, perfectly healthy. And then just like your nephew, right? It happened at age three uh, where he is diagnosed with leukemia. And so you never know, even if your child is born healthy, right? It can happen at any time. So what are um, you know some examples of costs? Because people, especially in Hawaii, right? Um, cost of living is so high. So talk in terms of cost versus value and and what um what is the value of having something in place as, as early as 15 days old absolutely i mean i agree with you you know living in hawaii is very expensive right and especially in most recent times with everything that's happening um i mean you know you just go like get gas or grocery you know we see that our 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 financial resources are being pulled in so many different directions right and sometimes i think um, when it comes to putting some financial solutions in place sometimes we kind of look at the the, the cost or the dollar amount right but you know with life insurance, especially children's life insurance, um, it's one of those things that actually get more expensive as we get older. So we want to actually get it um, as early as possible while we're still insurable, right? It's just one of those things that we know it's important. And um, when we need it, we can't get it or can't have it, right? Does that make sense? Yeah. Um, and so, you know, when, and for children's coverage, their own individual plan, you know, you, you're, you're, looking at in terms of a dollar a day or even a few cents a day, right, um, with a child's individual plan. Uh, and so, you know, it, and I think we, many of us already spend that, right? Um, we already spend that money. It's just a matter of, again, you talk about value. You know, they say that when you, you we tend to uh, allocate our resources, our financial resources to things that are important to us, right? Uh, things that we value. And so I think when it comes to um, this topic that we're talking about, what, the value is, is peace of mind and really just having a plan in place in case something happens. So, you know. Yeah, I like how you said that to get it when you don't need it, because when you need it, you won't be able to get it. And I think that's, you know, a really important statement in planning financially to have that in place. So specifically in terms of terminal illness with children, to say a family did have something in place and then the terminal illness diagnosis comes, how does, how does something like this pay out if a family does have it in place? That's a really great question. So, you know, again, it depends on the, it depends on the plan. It depends on the company, right? But for example, you know, companies, let's say you have, um, it, a, the plan could pay 50%, even upwards of 100% of your life insurance amount, right? So whatever that looks like, 100,000, 200,000, right? So, you know, um, 
a million dollars. Again, it really depends on, you know, your plan and the life insurance companies, how they pay out. So you're, we're talking in terms of, you know, 50, even 50% of a plan, right? That could be a few months of salary for a family. That could be, you know, the co-payments for the surgery that the child needed to have, right? So, um, or, you know, that's that significant amount of money that, you know, the families can really, again, um, not have to worry about where it's going to come from. So the death benefit is then advanced into a living benefit, and that pays out while the child is still living in order to be able to pay for their care with terminal illness. Yes. Yes, absolutely. Okay. Um, and then you said that it depends on the company, so it could be 50% to 100%? Yes. It, uh, it really depends on how the company will pay out. So, you know, again, uh, if you already have a plan, look through your contract, it will say it in your contract, um, it, how, how much the, the company will pay um, if you ever have a terminal illness. And what makes, uh, what makes a person eligible to be able to collect terminal illness? So terminal illness, if you again, that also depends on the life insurance companies, right? It could be um, if you have 12 months to live or 24 months to live, then usually the, uh, the families have an option to accelerate, you know, um, whatever the allowable amount is. So if it's 50%, they can take a lump sum payment of 50%. Um, so it really just depends on um you know, the, the life insurance companies and the, the specific type of plans and contracts. So that definitely something to talk to um, a licensed professional. Okay. I, I encourage families to talk with a licensed professional about. Thank you for that. So this is something that, again, it's really, it's a difficult topic. So I really want to thank you, Rianne, for being on the show today and just expand on solutions that are out there, you know, especially after the two interviews that I did last month, right? With Let Grace In and, and Hugs. And just knowing that there's so many families out there that needs the services of these organizations. And maybe if they had this type of education, um, they can help others put something in place so that different families that may experience it in the future won't have to experience it in the same way that, that they experience right? Not having a financial plan in place. Um, so if families are able to alle alleviate the financial stresses and worries, how, how does that help in terms of their physical health, emotional health, and so on? Yeah, you know, I know that's, um, it, there's really, when we look at the, you know, um, really look at the scope of how it affects a family, you know, um, we know that a lot of times stress is directly correlated, right, with our, with our health. So we're already going through a stressful time in our life, right? Um, and especially, you know, with um, the families who are dealing with um, their children um, being sick, right? It's, it, that, that in itself is such a huge um, stress on the family. And, you know, I, it, and I'm so grateful to you, Shonda, for bringing up this topic, because, again, um, like you said, over and over, it's not something people want to talk about. But I think it's so important to be able to um, bring awareness to the community, uh, that there are solutions that we can put in place, um, we can take more proactive approaches. And you know what, um, even with like your, maybe your existing plan right now, there are things that you can do like adding your child to your existing policies, right? So just making those little adjustments, you know, um, can go a long way for the family, but it all kind of starts with um, going back to that initial, that awareness first. Right, because if we're not aware of it, we're not thinking about it, and if we're not thinking about it, we're not going to take any action towards it, right? And so, um, again, it's not something that families ever um, 
you know, we never want families to experience this, but the truth is it could happen and it can happen to any family. And just like we want to prepare for financially for many other areas in our life, right? Um, this is part of it, right? And, and we've seen time and time again, um, statistically over and over again, and even personally, how um, emotionally and financially, uh, it can burden the family. And again, you know, to back to your question, you know, all of that stress impacts our health. And then, you know, when our healthy clients, our ability now to work and generate income, it's all a domino effect, right? Yeah. And when you talked about the long-term, short-term versus long-term effects, financial burdens can last you know, unfortunately, the person's entire life, if something happens that they did not plan for, right, it can follow them up until that person passes away. So for instance, something happens to the child, you know, that that financial burden can follow the parents throughout the whole, their whole entire life. Yes. So yeah. it's just, I think about peace of mind, right? And um, ultimately. Yes, ultimately peace of mind. So again, what you said, um, putting something in place when it's not needed yet. And so just in case right, for the unexpected, because when you do need it, you'll no longer be able to get it. And I want to thank you again, Rayanne, for coming on, sharing again about a topic that's very unpopular. Nobody wants to discuss their children getting sick, their children passing away before them. Uh, anything that has to do with a topic like that. However, again, over and over, we see that it does happen. I personally experienced it. I know many other parents, um, unfortunately, that have experienced it as well. So I just want to thank you again for sharing what families can do to ease some of the physical and emotional stresses by alleviating the financial ones. So do you have any last words for the viewers today, Ryan? I just want to, you know, again, thank you so much for this opportunity to have this conversation. You know, um, I think when it when it hits close to home, right, that that's when we really realize the importance. But we want to be here for the community to um, raise awareness so that we can um, be of service out there. So thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. And we'll see you next time on Think Tech Hawaii. Thank you so much for watching Think Tech Hawaii. If you like what we do, please like us and click the subscribe button on YouTube and the follow button on Vimeo. You can also follow us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and LinkedIn, and donate to us at thinktechhawaii.com. Mahalo.